Hi guys, it's Sarah Lavender, A S M R, here with another book ASMR video. I'm sure if you've been a subscriber of mine for any amount of time, you probably know in which I talk about books a smart style so tapping on them reading bits of them from you know the pages and making it ASMR and page turning things like that um, you can probably tell that I'm getting over being sick you can hear it in my voice a little um, I feel a lot better but as I've been saying in my other videos, making ASMR when you're sick is just not fun. But anyways, this video is also going to be mostly soft-spoken with a little bit of whisper here and there. Um, I asked my Patreon patrons, I asked those on my Patreon if I should do this video soft-spoken or whispered, and the vote ended up coming out to like almost 50-50. So I'm gonna do like some sort of mixed whisper and soft-spoken video, which are surprisingly hard to edit the sound of, but we'll see how that goes. So before we get started, I would like to thank the sponsor of tonight's video, Audible, once again. So if you don't know, Audible is basically the number one source of audiobooks, podcasts, spoken word entertainment. They have hundreds of thousands of titles. They have so many options. They have memoirs, languages, bestsellers, new releases. I find pretty much any book I can think of on Audible. I have been on a huge audiobook kick lately, so I'm going to be talking about some of those titles in more depth as part of this book ASMR video. But right now my absolute favorite is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This has got to be one of my favorite books of last year. It was just a fascinating look into the life of a child celebrity, especially one who I grew up with. She's Sam from iCarly. It was just so good and narrated by the author, which I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about that, but Jeanette added a level of connection with her story while narrating it that just made it so good, and I'm going to talk about more of that later, but highly recommend. So new members can try Audible for free for 30 days. And how Audible works is you get one free credit every single month to choose a title from their premium collection. And it's basically yours to keep in your library forever. And the newly included selection of titles makes an Audible membership so much more valuable and it gives all members a chance to discover new favorites, new formats, like the exclusive words and music series. So again, new members get a 30-day free trial, which you can start by clicking the link in my description, or you can text Sarah L to 500, 500, or go to audible.com slash Sarah L to start your 30-day free trial. So again, thank you Audible for sponsoring this video. first book that I'm going to talk about is a fantasy book that is extremely popular right now. 
let me show you. It is Jade City by Fonda Lee. It's got that classic intense fantasy cover. Now, I didn't know anything about this book going in. I only knew that it was very popular, that it was fantasy, more specifically Asian culture-inspired fantasy, which is very popular right now. And I haven't actually read an Asian-inspired fantasy yet, so I was very excited about this one. I believe it's a trilogy. Um, the premise of it, I don't know if I can do a good job of summarizing it, but it's kind of like a gangster crime fantasy novel. So it takes place in a fantasy world with like modern technology. It's like, it's hard to describe. It's not like your classic medieval fantasy. It's kind of takes place, I would place it maybe the 80s, because they have like cars and TVs and things like that, but all the countries are made up. Let me show you a classic aspect. I'm not gonna lie. I think that's because I didn't have the right expectations. I think if you know that first and foremost it is a like a gangster like the, I didn't grow up watching gangster movies, crime family movies. Um, that was never really my jam and the author said that she did grow up watching them and so she was trying a little less of a traditional fantasy novel and a little more of like a gangster crime novel, I wouldn't have been a little disappointed. So, <laughs> however, people say that the second book is even better than the first, which is rare. So I haven't quite decided to read the next one or not. I was like researching online and people were saying if you didn't like the first you might not like the second but if you like the first the second is even better and I have like FOMO I'm nervous that if I don't read the second I won't have captured you know it's it's winning a lot of awards it's very popular let me read you the first paragraph or two of the Synopsis. Jade is the lifeblood of the island of Kekon. It has been mined, traded, and stolen and killed for, and for centuries. Honorable green bone warriors like the Cowell family have used. 
used it to enhance their magical abilities and defend the island from foreign invasion. Now the war is over and a new generation of calls vies for control of Kekin's Kekon, Kekin's bustling capital city. They care about nothing but protecting their own, cornering the jade market, and defending the districts under their protection. Ancient tradition has little place in this rapidly changing nation. So yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. The action was really cool. Um, yeah, she's a good author. I don't, I think it really was just my own personal lack of interest in the subgenre. Or maybe the primary genre? I don't know. So, if you have read this, let me know if I should read the second one. Let's do some page turning, actually. say, yeah, I was never bored. I did have a little bit of trouble connecting with the characters. I wasn't, like, crazy about any of the characters, and, you know, I do like family intrigue and drama and, like, power grabs, which is why I love A Song of Ice and Fire so much. But you can't really compare, in my opinion. So, what are your guys' opinions about dust jackets? Do you just, like, take them off and just, like, throw them away, or do you keep them on? Normally, I get rid of them because I don't really like how the book slides out of them, but I've kept this one on. I don't know. So, the next title is... I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. So this was an audible title that I read. You guys, this book was so good. This is another book that is very hyped up right now. Everyone's talking about it. People get really mad at the title. I'm glad my mom died. Um... But by the time you're done listening or reading, it's just like, you understand what where she's coming from. It's a crazy autobiography by Jeanette McCurdy, who is Sam and I, Carly, talking about her life growing up and how she was pressured to enter acting as like a six-year-old by her mother, who... It's like a textbook narcissist, and like, I don't want to spoil anything, even though you might have heard about it, but like, her mother encouraged Jeanette into disordered eating. It is dark. It is funny. Um, yeah, and it's narrated by Jeanette McCurdy. which I was almost worried was gonna detract from the immersion, but and it does take a second to kind of get used to her voice and like knowing she's recalling these memories as she's reading them, but you get used to it really quickly and she's a really good narrator. I mean, she was an actress. What else can I say about it? Um, because she's the one narrating it at certain points, it makes the emotion of the scene that she's reading 
that much stronger and there's even a part where you hear like her throat choking up and she has to like take a breath I like re-listened to that scene because it was so intense I loved it I've been a sucker for autobiographies lately like Anthony Bourdain's this if I could listen to Anthony Bourdain read his own book <laughs> that that's my dream it's never gonna happen unfortunately but you know this is a good substitute kind of <laughs> It is, is it only, it's only six hours. That is a great length for an audiobook, you guys. I listened to like half of it when I was on an airplane. Because I will admit, it takes a minute to get the ball rolling. I started listening to it on a road trip and I was kind of like, not being like quite pulled in, but like an hour or two into it, you're just like, focused. It's really good. Number one New York Times bestseller, number one international bestseller. Highly recommend it. Especially if you have any interest in like what the behind the scenes of like these child actors in Hollywood, like what their lives look like. And Jeanette does admit that her experience was very different than a lot of her co-stars, like even Carly, I think it's Miranda Cosgrove, how their experiences were like totally different. Very good. And now that I'm saying it was only six hours, that makes sense how I was able to just like zip through it. Super good. So yeah. I'm a 50 year old woman because I like her books so much and she's kind of more popular I think with older women because <laughs> I don't know anyone my age who reads her but her, one of her books is one of my favorite books of all time Poisonwood Bible which I have right here incredible um, her other novels Pigs in Heaven, Bean Trees um, Laguna. There's a couple. I've read three or four. Um, Poison with Bibles up here. The rest of them kind of like are a little bit below it, but she's, she's really good. This is a collection of essays by her, and I am not a person who generally reads books that are collections of essays. The last time I did that, I think, was chicken soup for the teenage soul like, I don't know if you guys remember those books, where it's like short little essays, but by different people. This is a bunch of essays by her, and I'm only can I only picked it up because I want to hear what she has to say and I think those short essays are really good for her. like like you can read one and then put the book down and then pick it up two months later and read the next one, you know? Which is why I see the appeal of essay collections. I am enjoying it. It's not like revolutionary, but I'm really liking it. I've only read like three or four. I think she has like, let's see. Them are longer than others. And I love that it has illustrations. Let me show you. It's just, I'm really, I am enjoying it. I don't really have all that much to say about it more than anything. 
And I think an important piece of context for this is that this was released a couple years after 9-11, um, and it kind of influenced a couple of the, the essays. Just like the general sentiment of communities in America at that time, I was really young when 9-11 happened. I was in kindergarten, so that doesn't resonate that strongly with me, but I think if you're a little bit older, those chapters really will. Let me read you the back. In her new essay collection, the beloved author of High Tide in Tucson brings us out of one of history's darker moments, an extended love song to the world we still have. Whether she is contemplating the Grand Canyon, her vegetable garden, motherhood, genetic engineering, or the future of a nation founded on the best of all human impulses, these essays are grounded in the author's belief that our largest problems have grown from the Earth's remotest corners as well as our own backyards, and that answers may lie in both of those places. So like I said, it's not blowing me away, but it is making me realize that I would like to dabble in the world of essay books more. So if you have a favorite collection of essays, I feel like I'm finally ready to try some of those out, so please comment if you do. Let me read like a little snippet, okay? Okay, okay, okay. The patience of a saint.
you're not familiar with Andy Weir, he is the author of The Martian, which became a movie in like 2016 or something. Um, he writes science fiction generally, or maybe exclusively. I've only read The Martian, and now I'm listening, or I've listened to Project Hail Mary. I liked it. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. However, I wouldn't necessarily recommend him to somebody who doesn't at least moderately enjoy science. Maybe a little bit of math, or at least space and space travel. Basically, in his science fiction novels, he has his protagonist solve these complicated scientific experiments and problems in the book. So he'll talk about things like stoichiometry and physics, and if you aren't interested in those, it might be hard for you to read. And this is coming from somebody who, before becoming a YouTuber, was a mechanical engineer. So I think that's why I really like his books, because I recognize a lot of the terminology when he's talking about these science concepts and aspects of space travel. I don't think you need to know about these things before you read one of his books. It just, like, might help. And if anything, if you don't know anything about it, you'll learn a lot. All that being said, I loved it. Let me tell you what it was about. Um, this book is a lot more sci-fi because this isn't that big of a spoiler. It contains extraterrestrial life, and that is a big plot point of this book. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about doing an audiobook for this, um, and honestly, it did take me a second to get used to used to the narrator. And I ended up looking up the narrator because I was like, he's not how I imagine this character speaking, but he's really good at narrating. And it turns out he's like, he was an actor and he had narrated other books. He was really good. And about a quarter of the way through listening, um, and if you listen to it, you'll know what I'm talking about. They start including effects into the audiobook and Honestly, I liked it a lot. Like, I thought it added to the experience of the book, these kind of s special effects that he was adding. And also something that the narrator does is he, he will recreate the accent of different characters from different countries. So he will create a French accent, an Australian accent, a Norwegian accent, and he's really good at it, and at first I was kind of like, this is weird, like he's recreating all these accents, um, but then it just like grows on you. Anyways, what I'm getting at is that I do recommend this as an audiobook. It's 16 hours long though, so it is quite a listen, um, but it kind of He's so good at narrating, he really makes it feel like a movie. And I've listened to some audiobooks in the past where I did not like the narrator, and, and like the narrator ruined it for me, and no. I will say it's weird at first, give it a chance, and I think the narrator will really grow on you. What else about the story? Um, I think I still liked The Martian more. But I really, really, really liked Project Hail Mary. I mean, 
Weir's love of science just like bombards you in this one. It's just like, and like more specifically, more uh, out there ideas for space travel because Martian was like pretty out there, the technology he was inventing, the author. But this stuff in this book is like, you know, <laughs> it's so hard to talk about it without spoiling it because I went into this with zero idea about what it was about and like was surprised every chapter. So maybe I'll just end it there. It is a very good sci-fi novel by an author who was very good at writing sci-fi novels. So, <laughs> that's all. So along this space theme, I have a book here, very famous, Carl Sagan. saying earlier, as a mechanical engineer, I get so excited about this stuff, and even beyond that, just like having human life be put into perspective from like a cosmic scale, which is the theme of, you know, pale blue dot, the earth is just a pale blue dot. I think it's just healthy to be given that perspective again. So, I'm going to read the back for you. I'm going to be honest, I, I honestly don't know all that much about this book. A vision of the human future in space. In Cosmos, which is his TV show, I think, the late astronomer Carl Sagan cast his gaze over the magnificent mystery magnificent mystery of the universe and made it accessible to millions of people around the world. Now in this stunning sequel, Carl Sagan completes his revolutionary journey through space and time. In Pale Blue Dot, Sagan traces the spellbinding history of our launch into the cosmos and assesses the future that looms before us as we move out into our own solar system and onto distant galaxies beyond. So yeah, I really don't have all that much to say about this except that I'm excited. I've heard amazing things. I actually, I have some friends who this is their favorite book. So, I'm not even 100% sure how scientific he gets, like how accessible this is to people who don't know anything about space. What I'm thinking though is that it probably is very accessible. accessible. Here is a novel that I am very excited about. I actually had a subscriber email me about this book because they loved it so much and she was like, you have to read this book, it's so good. It is called Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Seven. So, I don't know a ton about this book. I have seen such glowing reviews that I'm very excited about it. Um, and I don't like to know a whole lot about a book before I start reading it or an audiobook before I start listening to it. I like the surprise. Even with movies, I like, 
avoid previews because I like being completely surprised. But I will read a very little bit of the summary in this exhilarating novel by the best-selling author, author of the storied life of A.J. Vickery. Two friends, often in love but never lovers, come together as creative partners in the world of video game design, where success brings them fame, joy, tragedy, duplicity, and ultimately a kind of immortality. That's all I'm going to read because I'm, I don't want to read anymore either. It is a 14-hour audiobook, which I think is a good, a good length. Um, I can't speak about the narrator because I haven't started listening to it, but as for the title in general, I've heard such good things. I think it's going to be a good mix of like fantastical sci-fi with interpersonal drama, which is my favorite. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and yeah, so that's might to be read after I finish Pale Blue Dot. And yeah, if you guys have any recommendations for me, if you are reading or listening to something that you are in love with, I love getting recommendations. If, um, you know, especially if I see a title mentioned over and over, I'm like, okay, I need to check that out. So you should definitely leave a comment and give me your recommendations. Okay, guys, thank you for putting up with my sick self as I film. You know, I do feel a lot better, but it's been a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I was missing a pinky nail, and I noticed, like, at the end of filming, and I went and just, like, put a new one on. so much for hanging out with me and I will see you